what we'll do is we'll just give it a couple more minutes just to let a few more um, people join onto the, onto the presentations and then uh, and then we'll get going. Just a reminder for those, um, you know, just just keep yourself on on mute just while the presentations are, are taking place. Um, there will be time at the end uh, for a Q and A. If you do have questions as we do go through, uh, please pop them in the chat. I'll just give it one more minute just to let a few of the stragglers join, and then and then we'll kick off and, and then get going. For those that have just joined, we are recording the session. So if you do not want to be on camera, please turn your cameras off. Thank you. I think we'll we'll get going at that point. Right. Well, th well, thank you very much, everyone, for for joining. Um, today we, we we've got a bit of a jam-packed session, uh, full of really good information from a, a number of different parties. We're going to hear from Amy Glanville at, at the GMCA, who's going to give us a bit bit of an update of the apprenticeship campaign they're currently running and and a bit of information. We're then going to pass over on to Suzanne McNicholas, uh, who's going to talk through her role within the Skills for Growth programme, how she works with customers and, uh, and uh, the support that she's able to offer. We'll then hear from Adrian Healy at the Levy Matching Service as well, and to talk through the, the process of, of applying for a Levy Match. Uh, and then we'll hear from, from myself about the, the, the Skills for Growth programme uh, as a whole as well. So just to, to hand over to Amy uh, to say a few words from GMCA. Thanks, Amy. Hi everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Amy. I'm Amy Glanville um, and I'm Apprenticeships Programme Manager for the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Um, it's great to see so many people here um, interested in apprenticeships just like we are, seeing their potential just like we do. Um, apprenticeships are a really fantastic opportunity for businesses to grow and develop their staff and to train people the way you need them to be trained. Um, and build your businesses for the future. We know through studies and research, the majority of employers who take on an apprentice say that it helps them improve productivity and it helps them to improve the quality of their product or service. So we know that apprenticeships are good for business. And they've grown up a lot in the last few years. Historically, when you hear apprenticeship, you think plumber or hairdresser. And while we still have great plumbing and hairdressing courses, they're not the only ones out there anymore. Um, we've got options for pretty much every industry from retail and customer service to civil engineering, healthcare and software development. And they're available at every level for anyone who wants to learn. It's not just school leavers um, and it's for people wherever they are in their career. So apprenticeships are also a fantastic opportunity for Greater Manchester as a whole. Um, they're great jobs for our residents with training and progression. Um, and they're helping build the skills that our industries need now and in the future. We know that while the exact number varies a bit, research estimates that for every pound we spend on apprenticeships, we get about 20 to 25 pounds out in terms of value for the economy. So we know that they work. Um, we just need to make them work for you as businesses. 
Um, and that's why we're so happy at the CA to be supporting the programmes that you're going to hear about today. Um, the Skills for Growth SME support programme and the Levy Matchmaking Service. Um, they make it really easy for businesses like yours to offer apprenticeships and they give impartial advice, access to funding and practical support throughout the whole process. So for us, it's a no brainer to invest in these services when we know what a huge impact they have. Um, the Levy Matchmaking Service alone has enabled, I think, nearly 400 apprenticeship starts in Greater Manchester so far. Um, and we know that behind every one of those is a real person learning new skills and a, a real business training someone how they need them to be trained at quite minimal expense. Um, and I think we're going to hear one of those stories later, which I'm really excited for. Um, we at the CA and, you know, as a whole, we want to see a city region with a really thriving apprenticeship landscape where businesses are able to offer apprenticeships, bring in the people and the skills that they need to grow and thrive. Um, we've got some work to do there, but we've got all the building blocks and we're on the way. So I'm really happy to be here today while we hear about the support that's available to you all. Um, I'll be sticking around today uh, throughout the session and for our Q&A at the end to answer any questions you might have. But again, thank you all for joining us and I really hope you enjoy the session today. Thanks very much, Amy. So we'll now lead on to Suzanne uh, to go through her role and the, um, the support that's offered through the Skills for Growth programme. Thanks, Tom. Good morning, um, my name is Suzanne. I'm an apprenticeship specialist working on the Skills for Growth SME support programme. I personally have a passion for working with businesses to show them how apprenticeships can help their businesses to grow um, and for the personal and professional development of their employees and that's at all levels. Um, I guide employers through the process from initial inquiry through to employing an apprentice and that might include the application for local and government grants and any funding for, for training. So the government created the plan for jobs and that was to protect, support and create jobs with a clear focus on ensuring that people have the right skills to get into work and employment and to have um, clear career progression. Um, the plan for jobs is a number of schemes, including apprenticeships, which is offering um, financial incentives. They're available for employers who are considering to hire um, and they offer work experience for new or upskilling staff. Um, so apprenticeships are a fantastic way to become leaders in a wide, wide range of industries um, and they play a vital role in delivering the skills that Greater Manchester needs to recover and grow after the, the pandemic. OK, so apprenticeships are real jobs. Um, they combine practical on the job training with sustained off the job learning um, and they're available from entry level right the way through to master's level equivalent. Your employee will get training in the knowledge, skills and behaviours that are relevant to their jobs and that they will be also paid a salary. So eight apprentices normally spend about 80% of their time in the workplace and 20% undertaking the off the job training. Um, and this could be in a setting that suits the business. So sometimes it might be a college, a training provider, an institute of technology, um, and it can also be delivered in the place of work. OK. So benefits to your business would be many apprentices stay with their employer when they finish their apprenticeship. This can make a sustainable investment um, in the skills to support your business as the economy recovers. It improves productivity as apprentices are motivated to learn new skills. It's a productive and effective way to grow talent and it capitalises on new ideas and fresh perspective. So recently it was um, in a recent survey 86 percent of employers said that apprenticeships had helped them to develop skills relevant to their organization 78 percent of employers had said that apprenticeships had helped them to improve productivity and 74 percent of employers had said apprenticeships had helped them improve the quality of their product or service okay so there's some um financial benefits to your business. So there are incentives available. So um, there's um, a £3,000 for each apprentice as you take on as a new employee up until the end of September. 
Um, this is paid in £1,500 after three months and £1,500 after 12 months. Uh, and this is additional to the £1,000 payment already made to support specific groups of apprentices, um, such as the 16 to 18 year olds or those with disabilities or young people leaving care. Um, with regard to training, it's fully funded by the government if they are 16, 17 or 18 year old. And if they are 19 to 65, the training is 95% funded by the government. So apprenticeship standards are employer led, which means that employers can specify exactly what is required from an apprenticeship in each role. Apprenticeship standards outline skills, knowledge and behaviours required to carry out a certain job. Um, and now I'll run you through some of the websites um, just to guide you through what I would do with it with a client. So okay, this website is Find Apprenticeship Training. Um, you'll see on this home page that when you click, click on the start button, you'll be directed to a search bar to find the apprenticeship standards. OK, so in this one, I've just I haven't put any filters on and it's coming up with 610 results um, and then it would take you in. You can put a search engine on and you can put chartered manager and I've used the chartered manager level six as just an example. So this just shows you the qualification level would be level six. Um, duration is 48 months and the cost would be a £22,000. Now, if they are 19 and above, that would be 95% funded with a co-investment from the company of 5% of that total cost. Um, and then this just shows a duration, category and maximum funding. So then again, just to guide the, the kind of the businesses through the process is just directing them through to finding out providers for this course within their local authority area. Um, I've used Stockport as an example, so from the next page you can identify that there's 53 providers um, available that are delivering that, that apprenticeship standard. Okay, from there, um, there's a link to, to get more information on the Chartered Manager degree. And on this page, it really does show you everything to do with the apprenticeship standard. So that's from the level, um, the, the trailblazing, um, the, the value, the, the role, the overview of the role. So this, this covers off everything within the apprenticeship standard. It'll show you details of the standard, the occupation and profile of the job match, the requirements of the standard. And this is a public domain as well so this really is available to anyone but it's just having that guidance through to show right this is available to you this is where you can get all the information on on the apprenticeship um, it includes things like uh, communication the leadership so what they're going to be covering off in that particular qualification um, managing people decision making operational strategy project management digital skills behaviors and then other key areas that are specific to that that qualification um, it also shows the level duration. So as you, you can see, it's a 48 month course on, on the right hand side there. Um, and then entry level requirements as well. So on this one, you would need to have a level or equivalent um, or level three qualification with English and maths as, as compulsory. And then other relevant um, could be to do with experience within the role. Um, but like I say, everything is, li is listed on here and it's, it really gives a full breakdown of, of the apprenticeship standard. Um, also, at the end of this particular apprenticeship, you would be identified to um, link with the professional registration. So successful apprentices for this particular course will have the option to apply for a professional recognition such as a chartered manager or member of the Chartered Management Institute. Um, it also shows at the bottom of this page how often they're revised. So generally an apprenticeship standard is revised every three years um, and that's just to ensure that it's kept up to date and it reflects the current requirements of that standard. Um, so this is the government site. So this is, as you can see, home apprenticeship training courses. I've looked for a chartered manager and it comes up with the the um, the training providers within that local authority. So if you click on the green link, you can see which providers deliver that standard and there's 53. Um, you can also see that it's delivered in three ways. So with this particular provider, there's a tick at Apprentices Workplace. Um, there's an option to do day release and block release. Each provider will offer something different. They, they might have um, a day release option, they might have a block release option, but it's, you know, it's about finding out that right training provider for your business and for your apprentice. 
So when did they start? So the definition of an apprentice is one bound by legal agreement to work for another for a specific amount of time in return for instruction in a trade, art or business. So they were started, apprenticeship started back in the Middle Ages and were closely related to medieval um, craft guilds in 1563, which they were earlier, but in 1563 is more or less when they became more regulated um, and they prescribed system by setting out more precise conditions. So they were they were existing before that, but this is when 1563 they were really identified as um, you know a, a good way of, of bringing people's skills out. Um, so they include the the duration of the apprenticeship, more importantly the relationship between the master and the the apprentice. Um, so surprisingly. Um, apprentices weren't necessarily voluntary um, and in some cases they in, in instances of compulsion um, they evolved by way of contractual agreement between the master and apprentice in many trades um, so they started regulating them and through this they were legally binding documents and uh, they were written and agreed and between the servant and the master in, the, in which the master would book responsibility for the apprentice's training and the welfare and then also provide them with accommodation so we have moved on a little bit from there and also quite interestingly that all this the apprentices were all male at this time um, they generally lasted for two to seven years as well Okay, so some statistics. So from the 23rd of March to the 31st of July last year, there were 60,860 apprenticeship starts, which unfortunately that represented a 45.5% drop compared to the same period last year. Um, the starts fell due to the impact of coronavirus, um, for, uh, which obviously started in March 2020. The pandemic and lockdown period saw a disproportionate negative impact on apprenticeship starts. Um, for those under the age of 19 um, and also those for starting an intermediate level apprenticeship. Uh, the numbers show a dramatic impact from the coronavirus lockdown, which had an employer's ability to launch new workplace training. So they were unable to kind of bring new people in. So there were problems launching apprenticeships and then obviously workplaces were shut. Recruiters also struggled to attract remote learners um, and apprentices aged 16 to 18 were the hardest hit overall. Um, but we can't understand the full impact as there's no final data available until the end of this year. So this is an interesting slide. So the age profile of people starting apprenticeships changed in 19 and 20 with a higher proportion of starts from apprentices over the age of 24. Um, that's 40%, 47% sorry, of the apprenticeships started in 2020 were by people aged 25 and over. Um, but last year's starts fell for all ages um, and the age group with the largest fall was 17, 17 years old. So the 26% less starts than the previous year. Um, but the number of women and men starting apprenticeships were almost at the same level and with slightly more starts by men, but more or less 50 50. Um, okay. So just included a table here of um, the, the levels of apprenticeships. So in 2019 and 20, um, the apprenticeship starts were more likely to be at a higher level. This is, you know, it's great news. It means that we're eliminating those myths around, you know, the, the kind of what people interpret a school leaver at lower level to be completing an apprenticeship. 44% were at advanced level. Um, so that's level three. 26% um, started at a higher level um, and that was actually you can see compared to the previous year it was at 19% were at a higher level so those higher level apprenticeships have really become a more popular and people are more aware of the ability to complete them you know as an option from going to university so the message is obviously getting out so which is great news. <clears throat> The number of starts and apprenticeship standards were increased by over 170,000 between 2017-18 and the following year. 75% of apprenticeship starts were 63, uh, sorry, um, were up 2019 and they were up from 63% the year before. 81% of all start starts were in four subject areas and anybody within um, the training and environment can probably linking with this being that most of them are business admin and law, health, public service and care, engineering, manufacturing and retail and commercial enterprise. OK, 
say, so apprenticeships are not just for those starting out in their career. They really are open to anybody of any age and of any ability. They're used for new new um, employees and also existing employees. So you can really upskill your entire team through apprenticeships. So they do cover many sectors. So here's just a few examples. There's over 1500 job roles that are covered with apprenticeship standards. Okay. And I just wanted to highlight some famous apprentices. OK, so Jamie Oliver started out as a catering apprentice and worked his way up opening his own chain of restaurants. Um, in 2003, he was awarded an MBA for, MBE for his services to the UK hospitality industry. Stella McCartney, she's a designer often referred to as fashion royalty. She began her career as an apprentice with a tailor on the infamous Savile Row. Um, and during her apprenticeship, Stella picked up the skills of the trade in everything from hemming trousers to pattern cutting. And she has since set up her most successful fashion brand and she designed the Team GB kit for 2012 Olympics. Um, one of the most famous artists that's ever lived, Leonardo da Vinci, started out as an apprentice. He went on to paint many of the world's famous pieces, including the Mona Lisa. Um, Prior to becoming a comedian, there's Billy Connolly, who left school at 15 to take up a welding apprenticeship in a shipyard where he worked for many years. And then Henry Ford, born in 1863, was the first surviving son of William and Mary Ford, who owned a prosperous farm in Michigan. And at 16, he left home for the nearby city of Detroit, where he found an apprentice work as a machinist. Now, I'd just like to introduce you now to Michelle. Um, so, Michelle, the, the Ralstan Group assists clients um, and their advisors with complex tasks and estate planning solutions. Um, and also they cover project management. Now, Michelle's engaged with our program since late last year, and she'd just like to tell you a little bit about her experience within the Skills for Growth SME support program. Thanks, Suzanne. Hopefully everyone can hear me OK. Is that all coming across fab? OK, so I'm I'm currently in Lanzarote at the moment, so my background's horrendous, so I apologise, but um, it's the only time we could actually manage to get away. So we are here, we've arrived, everything's OK. Um, so thanks, Suzanne. I'm Michelle Lee. I'm um, a small business owner based in Manchester. Um, my business is called uh, the Ralston Group, as uh, Suzanne kindly introduced me there. Um, so I'm also a, an apprentice. I'm I'm 32, and um, Suzanne happily introduced me to the the scheme last year, as she said. Um, so I'm not that typical apprentice that you see kind of around at the moment, maybe just coming out of school in the age of 16 or 17. Um, my background is marketing. Um, so last year I conducted a professional marketing diploma and I just I literally just got the bug for learning. Um, we engaged with the growth company last year um, and our mentor for the for, from the growth company called Sarah, she kind of said, although you are, you know, you're a director and owner of your own business, have you thought about with the way that your business is actually growing? Have you actually thought about looking at the apprenticeship schemes? And probably like most of you guys think, um, oh, no, I've never thought about that especially not for myself um but then she referred me to um uh, sean at the, at the skills team who then introduced me to suzanne and um, we got talking we got talking about what we wanted to achieve as a business um and also what i wanted to achieve personally um i i, I was reading um a couple of weeks ago about a study from linkedin about the um uh, what sorry what's it called it is the uh, quarter life crisis um, of which I fall in the age bracket between the ages of 25 and 33. A lot of millennials are out there that um, obviously with the results of COVID-19 uh, being made redundant having a crisis in their own lives about is this what I want to do um, going forward and I suppose I'm proof that you can change your career you can um, change what you want to do at any point, just like Suzanne said on her previous slide, you can do an apprenticeship at any age. Um, and, and if you are looking at the moment for apprenticeships, these government 
schemes that are available are available not just for the school leavers and the 16 to 17 year olds they are available i think until september i'm sure suzanne will confirm um for for any age group and they're an incentive that you should use and you should make the most of because there's a lot of people out there that are looking for new careers they're experienced people and they could give your business um some some growth prospects or even just bring something from their old from their previous careers um into your business to to make it work or even just for yourself like in my situation just for yourself if you're a business owner and you are looking to um upskill or further your career for yourself and for your business then definitely speak to Suzanne and the guys here and see what's available. We unfortunately couldn't get the apprenticeship levy because I think it was quite a short time frame, um, and it was kind of the end of the year. I think Suzanne wasn't it, so we kind of fell short a bit. Um, but um, I think with the five percent funding, I think we paid thirteen hundred pounds um, towards a, a six-year apprenticeship for myself. Um, which was £27,000 worth of training. So it's it's a considerable assistance with trying to further your career when you think about the price of going to, to university. So mine is a solicitor apprenticeship. apprenticeship. It's a six-year course and the solicitor um, apprenticeship and the, the SRA themselves, the Solicitors Regulatory Authority, are changing the way that people are accessing going into the legal profession. So if this again, if there's any small business owners out there that are looking to go into this sector, now's the time because they have changed the requirements for training um, and obtaining training contracts. So um, yeah, all I can say is thanks to Suzanne and the rest of your team. Um, I'm six months in now because I started in January, just finished my contract law exam on Monday. So yesterday was kind of a, I need to get out of the country and get some fresh air. I'm not going to lie, it is hard studying and working at the same time. But if if you're driven, if you're ambitious, if you want to, you know, go somewhere, then it's all about your mindset. And yeah, just um, thank you very much, guys. And thanks for asking me to take part today. Thanks, Michelle. It's great that you were able to take time out of your holiday to come and join us today. OK, and we're going to go with um, Adrian, I believe, next. And Adrian's going to talk to us about the Greater Manchester Levy Matchmaking Service. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adrian. I'm the programme lead on the Greater Manchester Levy Matchmaking Service. Um, we just heard some some great information about um, about apprentices and how they can make a real difference to your business and we've also heard there about 95% um, um, of the cost of your apprenticeship being funded by the government which is, which is great um, it'd be better if it's 100% but it isn't it's 95% so so what we've got uh, and what I run is is a service that's been commissioned by the combined authority to help um, small businesses who would have to pay that 5% co-investment and it may only be um, you know in Michelle's case 1300 pounds but it's you know it'd be good if you could get that completely free or funded I should say um, and what we do is we run a service that that links large uh, employers who pay something called the apprenticeship levy which it, for all intensive purposes is, is, is a tax that they pay on their payroll which they can use for their own apprenticeships um, but a lot of them aren't using it. So what we do is we, we link some of those large employers with smaller employers um, and the larger employers can, can pay for the cost of the apprenticeship training. So in essence, uh, that training is free. So the service was commissioned in August 2019. So it's been running for a couple of years now. Um, and it's, it's uh, as I've said, it's designed to match smaller employers uh, with, with the larger employers. And these larger employers are, are national, national employers, people like, you know, Lloyds and Amazon, Bentley, uh, Asda, the co-op. Um, that's just to name a few. We've, we work with quite a few levy donors. And what they like to do is, is support SMEs from the greater Manchester area uh, with the cost of apprenticeship training. Um, so to date, we've, we've, we've actually supported over 480 apprenticeships. 
and that's been uh, that's that's totaled the value of almost five million pounds, um, which is which is I think everyone will agree is is great to keep that in the local region because typically after two years, if that large employer hasn't spent that apprenticeship levy, uh, it starts going back to central government where it's spent on uh, goodness knows what at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's probably not spent on apprenticeships. So we've managed to keep that money within the region, which is something that uh, that we're very, very happy with. Um, okay, give me a second. Okay, so how do you use the service? Well, it's a website. Um, it's, it was the first digital service that was launched. Um, it's been copied by quite a few other local authorities and organizations now. Um, but it is a, it's an online website that you go to and you can see the address here. Okay. Um, and when you go to that website, you're, you're presented with this, this front page. Um, and so what we have on that front page is we have a little bit about the project, which, uh, which tells you in a lot more eloquent way than I just did about what, why it's been put together and what it does. Um, but it also gives you just a sample and a flavor of, of actually some of the apprenticeships that we currently uh, or some of the opportunities that are currently available. Um, and if you were to register on the site and post an opportunity, uh, your opportunity would, would potentially pop up on that front page so that large levy donors can log in, read a bit more about what you need and then maybe choose to support you. Uh, OK, so. Once you've registered on the site, and as I mentioned, this is a this is a free service. It's been it's been funded by the combined authority, so it doesn't cost you anything as a business to use. It will cost you, I would say, probably 20, 20 minutes of your time just to register and then actually create an opportunity. And what you do when you create your opportunity, we ask you for a little bit of information, but we try not to make it too onerous because we know that your time's important to you and you just need to get this done because you're, you're running a business or you're working in a business that, that, that needs your time. So we ask you a little bit about what the apprenticeship or apprenticeships you're looking for are, and you should be able to get those from your training provider if you're working with a training provider, how many apprentices you're actually looking for support with, and the total cost of that training. So that's the total cost of the apprenticeship itself, not just what we mentioned, that 5% co-investment, the total amount. So if that was a degree apprenticeship, as Michelle mentioned, that would be £27,000, OK? And then, as we've already said throughout the presentation, this can be for new apprentices where you're actually recruiting somebody into your business, or you can use it when you're actually upskilling an existing employee and putting them onto apprenticeship, as, as Michelle has done. Um, so actually, we ask you to just indicate which of those it is actually you're using. But if it might be, it might be for more than one apprentice, in which case it could be both. But tick the one that's, that's applicable to you in this particular opportunity. And then we ask you for your training provider if you have one. If you don't have a training provider, we would refer you to Suzanne and her team. And Suzanne would, would get in touch with you, find out a bit more about what you're looking to do, and then introduce you to a training provider that can help you. And then we ask you just to tick what sector your apprentice is going to be um, uh, working with. Um, so what the apprenticeship is and whereabouts in Manchester the apprentice is going to be based. Because as I've mentioned, we have local authorities who've registered on this system as levy donors. We would, are looking to transfer some of their levy. But really, they're keen on transferring in their own local authority. So what you do is you put in where that's going to take place. And then it will match you with anybody that's that's willing to look at transferring in that area. And lastly, um, but most importantly, is this box here on your opportunity. And this is your chance as a, as a small employer to actually really showcase about your business. Why do you need this support? Why are you looking for this? Why are you looking for, an, you know, to, to engage with apprenticeships and and really showcase your business to potential levy donors? Because what you've got to bear in mind is that your opportunity will go onto this online portal and it will be shown to potential levy donors. It's really got to stand out because they're going to be seeing quite a few of these. So they actually want to, you know, they want something to catch their eye and think actually we, we'd like to support that one because that sounds absolutely great. So once you've done that, you click submit and then that will post your opportunity. Um, and what you'll see is, well, what levy donors will see, people looking to support you with a levy transfer, will actually see is, you, is what you've just written, 
Okay, so this is what they would actually see. So they can see what apprenticeship you're looking for, how many apprentices, uh, who's looking, which, which training provider is going to provide the training, whereabouts your, your apprentices are located, uh, the sector of your apprenticeships, um, whether they're new or whether they're existing, and how much you're looking for. So how much are you looking for a levy transfer for? And then, as I've said, this most important part here, which is a little bit about what you actually need and why. OK, and then levy donors, if they like the look of that, um, they can choose to get in touch in a couple of different ways. So although I've mentioned this as a website, there's also a team of people working behind this, um, which are here to support you. So they'll support you as a business. They'll support the levy donor that's going to donate and transfer to you and fund your apprenticeship programs. And they'll also support the training provider because they're the, the kind of three people, the tripartite kind of way that it all works. So what levy donors can do is they can contact you through the system. So they might want to, they've seen your opportunity and they want a bit more information. So they'll send you a message through the system. And what that will do is it will ping an email into your inbox and let you know that you've got a message and you need to check it and possibly respond to it. So that's the first way that they can get in touch. Well, the second way is they'll actually contact my team and they'll say, listen, We've seen this one. We really like the look of it. Um, can you engage with the with the small employer? And can you let them know that we'd like to do it? And can you just sort it all out for us? And that's what we do. So that's what my team do. And then, as I mentioned, well, we'll look after everything for you. So we'll make this. I'm going to use the word hassle, okay? Because you could perceive this as a bit of hassle. So how much hassle do I actually want to go through? to say 5% of the cost of the apprenticeship. But actually, we this service, and we've proven it with, with, the, with the success of it, it really shouldn't be too much hassle for you. We really do try and take that out, out of the equation for you. So once you've post, taken the time to post your opportunity, if a levy donor is interested in supporting it, we'll take all the hassle out of it. So our team will be in touch. We'll tell you what you need to do with your apprenticeship digital account, when you need to do it, how you need to interact with your training provider and it all just happens quite smoothly i think the record that we've got at the moment is we've managed to do one within 24 hours uh, which we were quite proud of actually uh, typically time frame you're looking at kind of about two to three weeks potentially a bit longer if um if your apprentice isn't starting straight away and you're going through a recruitment process or something like that um there's various ways we can support you so we can do things like this we can do a team session where we can share our screen and we can show you how to, you know, how to log on to your account, how to access it, how to do the connection request. Or we're always on the end of the telephone as well, and obviously email. But we're with you every stage of the way to make sure that we can make it as hassle-free as possible. As I say, I think it's possible. You know, it is important to point out there actually isn't a cost to this. As I say, it's funded. It's been funded by the combined authority. It's it's approaching its third year now. Um, and it really is designed to just support you as a business and take all the hassle out. If we can, if we can get rid of the hassle, we're doing our job well. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Andy, and Andy is uh, is someone that's made good use of our service, I would say, and he'll tell you a little bit about uh, about how it all worked. Okay. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, as everyone said, it's a really fantastic scheme. Degree apprenticeships. We've Got, we've had three degree apprenticeships and two have won Apprentice of the Year awards at Salford and at uh, Lloyds Bank, which is absolutely fantastic for the company, great accolade for the company. But it shows as well as the, the talent we're getting through. These kids are really, really keen and they just, they, they're really good. They were, I wouldn't get the job if I applied for it, my company, because they're so talented, these young people coming through. And what they've quickly gathered is they can get a degree without having to go through the full university and coming out of a lot of debt at the end, like the traditional university route. So um, these guys, you're getting the best talent is want to get a degree, get a good head in the career, come out with no debt at the end of it. So, you know, they really switched on and really focused on their career moving forward. With the levy, Matchmate, the first time it was um, sponsored by the government, which is 100% actually because we was one of the first. Second time, because Kai was such a, a massive influence in the company. She's had such a positive effect. We said, we'll try for another apprentice. And we couldn't split the two uh, two of the candidates out between Ned, who's pictured him and myself, and the much younger one. And um, Alex, um, she's another degree, degree apprentice with the, and the quantity surveying scheme. Uh, and they were both so good. We got on the phone to Lloyd, who was funding our apprentices, and said, 
do you mind funding another one? Because we've found two that are fantastic and they were more than happy to help. And uh, they both had such a positive effect on the business. Um, I think we put the advertisement up. Um, then the, the next day, Natalie McGrath rang me up, very excited. You got someone who's put in for you? <laughs> get on the get online. And then straight away, we got back in touch with Lloyds Bank. They was going to fund it. And it was really easy. Uh, it, we just filled in a couple of forms and that was it. Um, we've got a good relationship with Salford University where they've got a really good construction uh, team there. So they was fantastic working through. The guys are going to Salford. The last year has been a bit different because they've been distance learning. But um, at Jameson's, we try to give them enough support so they can get through it and they can understand, you know, how, you know, understand the job and understand their development and their careers. So no, it's I can't speak highly enough for this whole scheme. It's absolutely fantastic and it saves me a fortune by, by not having to put them through it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I think, um, yeah, you were one of the first to use the, the service when it was launched. And I think, um, as you mentioned, you've used it a couple of times. So uh, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the end of our presentation, Tom. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah, thank brilliant. you. Thank, thanks very much, Adrian. And and I think it's just great to hear from the likes of sort of Andy and Michelle, uh, just about the sort of the positive uh, impacts they've had from the the different schemes, but also the positive impacts apprenticeships have had on their organisations as well. Um, so what I'll do quickly is just quickly talk through the Skills for Growth program in its entirety. So uh, Suzanne works as an apprenticeship specialist uh, within the Skills for Growth program. So her remit is very much in, uh, to work with clients and guide them through uh, the process of, you know, applying for uh, the likes of the levy matching service, looking at different training providers, ensuring that the right role profiles are matching up to, to, to the learning programmes that they're, they're going to go on to as an apprenticeship programme. What the Skills for Growth programme does is almost three steps before that. So what we'll do is it will have a, a dedicated skills coach that will work with the organisation to look at their business ambitions, their, their growth ambitions, their challenges, what they're, where they're looking to get to as an organisation and where skills kind of fit into that. What we then do is we work with each individual within the organisation and almost do like a training needs analysis with them to understand what they're doing in their current role, what do they do well and where do they need support and extra skills within their particular roles. We also look at if, for instance, if someone's looking to move into a new role, what type of skills would we need uh, to, to get in place to ensure that they can do that role effectively. What we then do is we research uh, skills provision through uh, training providers across Greater Manchester and beyond. The best provision that are we are able to match up with those skills gaps for that individual. Now, this is a completely fully funded service. So, uh, for instance, you know, if you went out to the marketplace and got an L&D consultant to come into your organisation to do this mapping exercise where you'd, you'd look at your, your skill gaps analysis, you're probably looking at a considerable amount on a, on a per day basis. So this is absolutely a fully funded service where we're able to go into your organisation, completely map out where the talent sits in your organisation and where you need to get it to, to meet your business ambitions. Alongside that, you've got the additional support of Suzanne, and we also have health and wellbeing and business change specialists, which are able to to help you um, not only with the apprenticeship side, but with your health, your health and wellbeing side to look at the wellbeing of your employees, look at implementing a positive culture within the organisation and, and really looking at how we can improve productivity by by improving that that wellbeing of your employees as well. Just click on to the next slide. So how to access the support. So if you're an SME organisation, if you have under 250 full time staff, you turn over under 50 million euros. You have a trading address in Greater Manchester and you are not part of a political faith or tobacco related organisation. You can access this support so you can go through the process of looking where your talent sits within your organisation, looking where the skill gaps are and then looking for someone to map out and, and broker relationships with training providers that can offer that support. If you're not an SME on this call, uh, but would like to, to help SMEs that you currently work with, it's a great opportunity to, to help SMEs in, in your supply chain from a, 
uh, corporate social responsibility or just to have a voice of the future commission of skills in Greater Manchester. So all this great intelligence that we're gathering is being fed back up to the combined authority who are then going to be looking to commission um, pieces of work or training provision that meets the gaps of um, of, of what they're, they're seeing the, the asks for from, from organisations. So it's a fantastic programme. It's, as I say, it's fully funded support that's available to your organisation. Um, and that is the end of my slides. And thank you very much. Um, what we will do is we will send out these slides from both Sir Suzanne, Adrian and, and uh, myself slides. Um, but now what we'd like to do is open it up to any questions that people may have, if possible. question um for uh, michelle for uh, one of the challenges that some employers have is the 20 percent off the job and releasing people in terms of time how have they overcome those challenges what would they say to someone who had that as a challenge oh sorry the, that signal is slightly slightly disturbed then the sorry can you just repeat the 20% off the job for some small companies, that's quite a challenge. And so how have you overcome those as challenges or what would you say to someone who had that as a challenge, who had a small business? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So um, I dedicate a Friday for my 20%. Um, and because it is my business, um, then I am going over and above every day, just working constantly. Um, we are only a young business. We only started. Um, in October 2019 and although COVID came about we are busy and have remained busy which you know thankfully I'm so happy about that um, it is stressful it is hard work but you have to kind of um, com compartmentalize your work so you know that <clears throat> you have to dedicate that time to spend solely on doing your reading, preparing for your workshops. Um, there is a choice of what days you can study. Um, so all of my workshops are online so that they're all through virtual study. It's a two hour slot for your workshops, but there's about probably a two or three hour preparation for it. So depending on the level that you are looking at or any apprenticeships looking at, as long as there's a support network available in your firm, and that the, the higher level guys or whoever the supervisors of are the the apprentices know um, what's in what's in kind of um, what's a part of the apprenticeship in total. As long as that supports there for them, um, they should be fine. And any of the the learning providers as well, they understand that there's a lot to to juggle with, and everyone is very supportive. Um, I've not, uh, obviously with the other studying members that are on my course, there's some that are similar age to me. There's also some that have just come out of school that obviously I already achieved a degree. So I understand how, like, what's expected of me from the standards. Some of them do struggle just, just to kind of understand. And it's just having that study group, the support network, but I, ca I can't fault it so far. Um, and I, I am tired, hence why I needed a break. <laughs> if I can come in on that as well, I think as an employer, it can sometimes feel a bit daunting, the 20%, but it's important to sort of know that different courses do that differently. So sometimes we sort of see, we assume that it'll be one day a week in college, and that is the case for some courses, but for some it's done in different ways. They might do it as block release, or people might do it as bits and pieces throughout the week in the workplace. So depending on the needs of the individual and the course and the business, you can kind of split it up in lots of different ways. And sometimes that 20% off the job learning doesn't mean 
that they're doing something completely separate. It can be something that's different to their day to day work, but still related to the business. So sometimes it means that there's extra value for you as a as an employer because they're doing work that's useful and contributes to the business, even though it's a bit different for them and is a, you know, is a challenge and a stretch for them. So it, you know, the 20 percent it is a big commitment, but it's not always quite as restrictive or daunting as it might first sound. Thank you. Are there any other questions from anybody else? doesn't really look like it so what we'll do is we'll follow up from this presentation with the with the slide deck uh, copy the recording and you know and um, how to access the different supports available to you um through the levy matching service and and also through the skills for growth program as well and if you have any questions uh our contact details will be on that follow-up email that gets that sent through to you but I um, really like to take the time to say thank you very much for joining today and, and have a enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and the rest of your week. But thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Thomas. Cheers.